All right, we're coming back on your live TV, live every Thursday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. We have a wonderful guest here that I'm going to have a question on our sheriff candidate, uh, Mr. Bedwell. Tell me about the students, I mean, the classroom, the teachers. Are they ready to carry a gun? I've spoken to teachers. I've spoken to, to administrators. and I've spoken to the school police and, um, department head, uh, Chief Aketsa. I've sat in rooms and listened to all sides of this. I will help the, the CCSD put whatever in place is that they want. If the school district wants to, to give to, to licensed teachers to carry a firearm, I want to be part of that training. I want to def help define what their role would be because I don't believe we want teachers, even if we arm teachers, I don't think we want them to become, think that they're terrorist hunters or that they are active shooter specialists. They need to learn, they need to teach. If, if a teacher is going to be armed, mm -hmm. I believe that should be something that would, should, would be used only as that last resort. When they've barricaded themselves in and, and whoever the shooter is breaches and, and, and they can it's protect themselves. Type. It's a last resort type thing. Because police officers even, who work this job every day, in the, in the fog of, a, of an active shooter incident, mm -hmm. it's very, very hard to determine what the threats are. Well, we don't want it to happen again that happened in Parkland. No. You know that's happening. That for well, it seems children like it's happening. You know, and it's every happening two all weeks over. Yeah, every every news. school. Exactly. And it's, it's so dangerous. Why we're allowing that? Why what? we're not allowing it? Why? Why it's don't we happen? change it? Why we? Why we? We need to change. I mean, if the teacher need to carry the gun, why not to well, protect their children? Something needs to be done differently, obviously, right. because the, the the massacres continue. Um, what is concerning to me is that there are folks out there who think that we shouldn't even have armed security on schools, not school police, not the, you know, the monitors, whoever it may be. Security running around, No, nope, not even security. What is it? In schools, they're saying that they shouldn't be armed. And that's concerning because then police, regardless of where you're at, they cannot mm. be everywhere. If something were to happen, God forbid, hopefully it'll never ever happen again, we'll never have to talk about it again, but if something were to happen and you have somebody that's professionally trained on campus that could stop the situation, not having that person there, to me, gives somebody an incentive to maybe go do something despicable like that. So it's my opinion that we're at a crisis moment here. This is a 911 well, type What do you of think issue. about that? Well, here, here's the thing. In, uh, on 9-11, people hijacked airplanes and flew them into buildings and into a field in Pennsylvania. Killed right. a lot of people. The federal government, who was the only f um, agency that could address that, mm -hmm. didn't say, well, let's make it safer. Let's work to find better ways. Let's make laws for gun control. No, what they said was, we're going to send the National Guard until we can fix this. So at this moment in time right now, I believe the sheriff, as sheriff, I will step up to this issue and I will ensure that every school in every area, area command has police officers, metro police officers assigned to it that go there and make sure that those children are safe. I'm not going to be the locker police or the cigarette patrol, but they're going to be seen by the, by the students there as protectors. They're not going to be there to hassle kids over tattoos, for example. They're going to be there to make sure that the, the ingress and egress from the school is safe. That we don't have someone come up in the middle of the day and shoot their way in the front it, door. It's so funny, let me interrupt you. It's so funny, I always attend to the community board of uh, uh, Sheriff Lombardo. I asked that question to him. You know what he told me? He said it's not needed to have a police around on the school campus. I said it's needed because so many, you know, I mean, bystander, they're, you know, driving fast. And what he said, it's not needed on that time. But maybe he is going to consider now that it needed one, at least one police car there. Well, I don't know what, what, what his answer would be. And I, I hope that he takes up your offer to come on to the show sometime. But yeah, I mean, it, obviously what's what's been going on, something is, is not working. We're right. not immune to it. Right. We Absolutely, absolutely not. know that, absolutely not. and the country is not immune. Yeah, but you, to it. But you don't that. want a fortress mentality, no. and no, that is the key. Where you have uh, co collection of, of, of weapons and knives and so forth. There's a difference between a police presence and right. an observance. You can be, you know, and use the air marshals, for example, on the airplanes. They're there, but you don't know where they are. But they're there. They're around. Yeah, that's it. So it I'm just... wondering if that's the key. We can have 
uh, uh, police presence without making it known to the students, you know, because obviously if you're at point A on campus, you're telling people I'm here, not there, and if they're ever going to have these wackos who will attack the school, they'll purposely avoid where you are and they'll go some other place. But if they don't know who is there, mm. where they are, then it's, it's, it's well, much the more The problem is there's too many impact. entrances well, and exits agree? into a school where if you have 10 points of entry, then what you just said is valid because you can't you can't put 10 officers there, well, but, right? I mean, but let's look at what's going on right now. Sadly, what we have right now is if there's a threat at a middle school or an elementary school, none of those schools have, poli have police officers assigned. No. They don't have enough no, police officers to do it. They only go to high schools. Correct. So what happens is school police sends a patrol car there the following morning, and the, and the officer sits there as the children come to school. So what that says to, to a person, and this is where my military background comes in very handy, as a Marine for 20 years and guarding embassies overseas, I know how mm. to provide protection. Yeah. And I know how to not only provide protection that the bad guys don't know how to counter, I, I know how to make people feel safer. You know, I, some people have said, oh, we don't send the police and it becomes a police state. That's not true. The more our children are around police officers and see them as their protectors, Correct. the Sorry, less they will yeah. feel Correct. that they are oppressors. Correct. But we're going to take this on. We truly are going to take this on. They should. They should be around with the kids so that these people will be afraid to come in. Wow, they have right. a protection, I think. And they can speak to the police Correct. officer and know if they see something or hear something and they're afraid, they have someone they know they can trust to go and talk to. Well, let's go but, to another uh, question. Uh, yeah, let me, Stephen, let me, let me, uh, let me take this point. question or after go the ahead. second? Go ahead. Can I do it now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and that is, uh, you're speaking as though the people who do the shooting think rationally. Uh, in many cases, they have uh, mental problems. So I'm wondering, despite what you're saying, will this really have any detriment? Will you, how can you mitigate against people who don't care if they see the police, if they don't care what's going on? That their mental uh, awareness, their focus is on totally something different. And I'm not sure whether you can actually uh, take steps against such a person like that. What, what do you think? I spent five years overseas protecting our embassies against suicide bombers. There is no one more irrational and no one who cares less about the outcome for them personally than a suicide bomber. Please let me assure you that there are ways to mitigate these threats. And the fact that you're right, these are irrational people, but these are kids, keep in mind, the majority of these are, are committed by uh, either late teen, early 20s, people who, have a, who, who want to make a, a point, but they do not want to be in a confrontation. They almost exclusively commit suicide, and the ones who don't leave the property to get away. They don't want a, a fatal encounter that they may lose, even if it means killing themselves. I, I know this is hard to, to guard against, but I can assure you that we do it worldwide. Israel deals with this every single day of the week in pretty much every building, uh, community building, school. These things can be countered. All right, that's a very good answer to you, Stephen. Did you get that answer? Do you, are you satisfied? We're gonna let him come back on the fourth segment and why is he running for a sheriff in Nevada? But anyway, let's talk about the incoming Raiders. What do you think about that? Is that a good place for the Raiders to be in? Well, the fact is that there's a lot of change going on in, in Southern Nevada. Whether you like it or not, these changes are coming. The, the Golden Knights are a wonderful experience for us. It's changed the dynamic. The Raiders will be here and it will change the dynamic as well. What we have to do is we have to adapt. We have to change, and I don't think we've changed much in the way we police in the Valley for the last decade and a half. I think we're probably doing about the same things. We need to start adapting now. We need to make changes for things that have already happened, and we need to make changes for things that are coming. The most important thing that I can say to the people that I'm asking for your vote is, I will lead public safety in these areas. I'm not t saying that I'm going to tell people how to do it. I'm not going to tell the strip, um, the MGM properties, for example, whether or not they can have enhanced security or what that should look like. What I am going to say to them is I'm going to be a part of that effort and we can integrate with them and it will, be, it will make everyone safer if we do this as a as a community effort 
and not have every little place making their own security adjustments. And at the end of the day, people are trying to decide which strip hotel they want based on who has the best security guards. I don't think we want that for, for Las Vegas. We'll be right back on the last segment and we're going to be talking about why is he running for sheriff, what do you think about that, and maybe he can explain himself. You know, he's going against with the sheriff now, Sheriff Lombardo. We'll be right back.